For, so when people come and they look at these objects, is it important for them to know that this is about your personal life or is are you looking at just objects or are you looking at sentimental things? Or I think it's a bit of both. I think they won't help but know it's about my family because the way I want to show it, they're going to be numbered in the book. Oh, so okay. you can like... You don't have to, but also because the, because of the way the Polaroids are, some of them, are like a person off the street won't really know what it is. I know what they all are because I recognise them, but some of them people will be like, oh, what's that? So I'd like there to be an element where they can go and find out so if they, they want, want to. want them to know, yeah. So definitely that's attached, but I think it's a wider thing as well of looking at objects and why people choose particular objects. Um, mm. Because one big thing that's come out of all of this for me is that actually I think it's it's a self-portrait <laughs> more than it uh, originally. I just thought I was documenting about the, those three, but actually I think I'm not really because it's so slanted on what I like and what I think and what I choose of it all. Is that because you had three collections and you specifically chose these things out of them so therefore they've become about you? Because yeah. I think so. Oh, was there a whole load of other stuff yes. that went? Yeah, how it started, um, I the cases in the corner were all full of stuff, plus there were bags of stuff as well. And I filmed myself taking one case at a time, taking one thing out and putting it by the photo. So originally, this, these piles of stuff came out to here of the amount of stuff that was there. So that was the first step. And then from there, I documented everything that was in that pile, which is what's in the book, just in order of what I found when. And then I sorted it into what I didn't want to keep anymore and what I might keep. So what's here is what I might keep, but I think I still will get rid of some of it. So um, is there still stuff you've already taken out? Yeah, loads of stuff. Wow. Loads of stuff I've got rid of. They had tons of letters and communications like that. So I needed to read all of those to find out if any of them were important or of interest to me and then but then throw them away if they weren't or or even some of them were great to read, but then I don't need to keep it. I've like read it so I know about it now, but I don't need to keep it. And then from there I then started choosing what I was going to photograph. Oh, okay. So the photographs. So how how did you choose those? They are definitely very much what I remember, like things that I remember were either important to one of them, or just a really visual image of how I remember my life growing up, um, of things like the Uno cards. <laughs> we always on the summer holidays we played Uno every single night till the small hours. So that was just something that is very evocative of that time um, but all of those objects have some sort of memory or attachment what before you came in here what was your intention okay uh, one intention was simply that I needed to get rid of stuff <laughs> I just knew I had to face all this stuff because it's all lived in those cases for, well, from my dad for 10 years, <laughs> and my brother six years, and my mum three years, and I've not been able to look at it, I've not been near it. I just put it all away because I knew I couldn't get rid of it, but I didn't know what to do with it. I really wanted to work out different ways of documenting. How do you document something? How do you, like, three whole lives? And it is quite weird standing in front of these looking at that life has ended up in that little pile of stuff. The, the Polaroids are such a DIY yeah. way of making pictures at home, aren't they? They're so yeah, I wanted a really immediate thing because I wanted to be able to take the picture and have it there and then yeah. to like make decisions straight away. But also I like the, that they're one step removed from the object. It's not, you can't touch it, it's kind of 
it's it's lost it's, it's gone memory. it's gone somewhere yeah. it's like the photo album of my memory yeah <laughs> and it's like when right you think off. of stuff like you can you can see it in your mind's eye yeah but you can't see it i think when i started i had no idea what was i just knew i had to get the stuff out and look at it and start making some decisions so it didn't have other than when i started i did know that i wanted to film myself taking all the things out and then I wanted to somehow document them, but I didn't know how I was going to do that. So, um, would you say that your research into documentation informed the way that you decided yes, to do definitely. it? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And I suppose I'm all about aesthetic as well, and things just being actually being quite beautiful in some way, or um, oh, I don't know how to describe it really. But so yeah. I, it, for me, it is about the end aesthetic of it as well. It's not just about documenting it as a fact. Does that make sense? Mm. It's about a feel for it. And that's what I mean, I think, about the documenting. I'm a document of them, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Just me and who I am. Because I'm me, because they brought me up, I suppose. That's what this is, really, isn't it? It's taking away those layers and kind of disclosing me, I suppose, in the end. Whereas as originally I thought I was disclosing them. It's not really about them, is it? No. <laughs> That's what I've kind of come to realise. It's just, it's about me. So I've, le- I, I, yeah, I've just learned loads about myself <laughs> and oh. where I come from. So, yeah. <laughs>